can advance ourselves as humans and break the attachments, whether unconscious or conscious, to um, the things that are constantly being thrown at us, whether that's propaganda, false narratives, um, psychological operations, belief systems, um, distortions, uh, frequency modulations, and things that just throw us off. You know, how, how, how can we like sit there in the face of it and actually advance ourselves instead of have it weaken us? Because anytime adversity strikes, we have one of two choices. We can either let it bring us closer to ourselves and help to advance us, or we can be victimized by it and weakened by it to the point where um, we are no longer functioning from our higher awareness or intuition. We're letting something else run the show and we're breaking that. This is what this time is all about, the great awakening. Um, where are we allowing ourselves to feed into this matrix? Um, because if we feed into it too much, we're actually enabling uh, an artificial timeline and a reality that we don't need to participate in. So we really wanna get in touch with what the true organic ascension reality is about and what's truly going on on a cosmic and earthly level so that we can appreciate it and, and work with it from the inside out and outside in based in um, what's truly real instead of this imposed system and artificial overlay that actually uh, is way more than just mind control and social engineering. It goes into um, the different types of dark weaponry that was put in uh, the planetary grid network to create reversals and to create um, just a world that we're born into that through osmosis, we kind of pick up on you know this reversal coding and the manipulation of Stargate energy. And I'm not gonna like go too deep into that, but I will just kind of touch upon it. This world was once far less dense than it is today. And when we are dealing with galactic wars, cataclysms and the collapse of the higher dimensional civilizations caused by exploding planets, everything rapidly changed. We were dealing with abuses of free will, hybridization, the manipulation of incarnate consciousness and the manipulation of our DNA. So, you know, starting off in the Lyra system, you know, in a free will universe, you got your guardian founder races, you've got like the Elohim and the Seraphim and you got your fallen angels, you got the Luciferian kind of rebellion. But like, yeah, that can all get like so complicated to try and figure out. But if we look at it as DNA architecture and that all these different things are parts of ourselves that have kind of splintered and fragmented apart, we can begin to look at the different archetypes and the different aspects to invite it to come back into integration so that we can become whole and rebuild the DNA ar architecture. So all these like exploded planets or hybridization or the manipulation of consciousness and how um, some of these tactics disconnected us from true source energy with lower creator gods kind of holding this veil over us. Um, we can look at it within ourselves uh, when we check in with our own energy systems and ask ourselves, is our ego dominating? Is our like wounded pain body dominating? Um, is there a belief system that we're holding on to that is kind of keeping us from being sovereign or connecting with our own truth frequency? And usually um, we don't really realize it until a crisis shows up, maybe a physical illness um, or some you know, kind of breakdown or some sort of acknowledgement that a person doesn't feel seen or doesn't really feel like they fit in. And you know, it's like, okay, these are all arrows pointing towards, okay, let's reassess this, let's look at this and give ourselves enough credit and respect to say, where do I need to change? Where, where do I need to release something or transmute something or, or transcend something so that um, we feel you know, aligned? And once we feel aligned, we recognize the things that don't really serve us and we can begin to let go of uh, draining influences and things that just kind of make us miserable. And we make room for synchronicities to support us finding things like soul family and soulmates. And um, so we don't have to compromise ever. We just have to be willing to take risks and have the courage to just stand strong in who we you know, truly are by just giving ourselves permission to just be ourselves because that's where all the magic happens is just saying, you know, I love myself enough to give myself the full experience of um, feeling into the emotionality, feeling into the triggers, feeling into all of it so that uh, we don't project upon ourselves that something's wrong with us. And, and instead we look at it like something's trying to get my attention and I'm gonna like initiate through this and understand it more 
rather than maybe go on a pharmaceutical drug or mask the symptoms through just uh, putting a Band-Aid on it or, or distracting ourselves away from it. And that's the real you know, purpose here. We're here for spiritual and soul development. We're not here to you know, fit into some status or some model or some expectation that society holds, which is obviously different culture to culture and throughout you know, the world, there's you know, different maybe traditions or things that are passed down. But as we're seeing in the United States since uh, 1947, the level of infiltration and indoctrination, even in the school systems and universities and just coming from the political realms and the entertainment industries, um, it has really, really created uh, a human like persona of subpersonalities that are basically products of the system. Um, and, you know, people either do a real great job at fitting into that or they're just, they can't play the game. And it's not like it's all programming and it's all negative, but very often um, we're held hostage by certain stigmas or certain insecurities that um, relate to self-worth or a false sense of self-worth based on who we think we should be versus who we truly are um, because of you know, some of these agendas and programs. So even a really awakened person can struggle with this because of you know, the misunderstandings or the projections uh, or the targeting that you know takes place in the school systems where the star seed missions and those that are really like thinking outside of the box aren't really given any um, proper attention or uh, it, they kind of just get dismissed or it's like, as I've talked about and I think a lot of people uh, can relate, you just maybe get slapped a label of ADD or you know doesn't sit still in class, has a terrible attendance and therefore, okay, you're an F sort of failure kind of, Thing. And so we're recovering from a lot of this stuff that even if we're awakened to um, can kind of have a grip on us because it starts so young and we have amnesia, you know, we're given our biological parents and we're thrown into a system um, that doesn't appreciate the larger, larger picture of our greater galactic history and what's truly possible um, in the integration of spirituality and science. We're, we're learning dead sciences. We're learning histories that are not fully accurate to what truly took place. And it's a lot to break through and, and, and break free from. So anyway, because of all these different events that took place in this free will universe, it has made it so much more difficult to maintain a multidimensional embodiment and a connection to spirit because of all that has taken place in our galactic history and while in physical form. In this profound window period, we had the opportunity to return to these higher planes of existence. And it's a process. Um, it's a process and I'm gonna get into that. You know, I mean, everybody's familiar with the term dark night of the soul. You know, there's some very, very uncomfortable places that we need to go through to, you know, upgrade. And that's part of the transformation, you know, process is to move through these, you know, different levels in order to gain, um, you know, greater awareness, to, to bring mindfulness and conscious awareness to the things that may have previously been unconscious. When we shine a light on unconscious energy, we recognize that there's, we're multidimensional. We have a creative imagination and we don't want it to be infected by, you know, things that cause us to live in a limited sort of way. So currently, uh, planet Earth's inhabitants are undergoing a war over timelines. The invading forces of the negative alien agenda use the artificial tree of life as a manifestation grid. Trigger events to hook us into false solutions is a constant. False flag operations, psychological operations um, to kind of like keep us hooked into sort of like, uh, like a, a, a trauma loop or, or, or uh, just kind of being in survival or, you know, not being able to let go of the news or what's kind of going on and just like, you know, ex experiencing reality from the outside in instead of the inside out, where we're just constantly reacting. And they've done a really great job at hooking people into the point where we expect somebody to just kind of like lead us out of it um, or save the day when the great awakening to me is all about recognizing that that power exists within, no matter what kind of adversity we're dealing with, spirit holds dominion over physical matter. Um, and it's our job to stay as connected as possible when everything is trying to do the opposite and plug you into something that um, is basically a false light parasitic vampiric system of control. 
that is leading people to greater enslavement. And this is not new news to any of us, but here we are. And it's like, we're waking up to it every day. And it's like, sometimes it just feels like, you know, this can't be reversed or it's just getting worse and worse and worse. But I mean, if we look at our own lives and the kind of adversities and struggles that we go through just in navigating the human experience, whether we're getting out of a narcissistic relationship, whether we're breaking a, a addiction or a habit or facing some level of um, imprisonment or, or isolation, uh, the power of the mind and what it's capable of doing when it connects to the creative imagination and, and different frequencies that shift our perspective, um, we start to access a miracle vibration and the physical world responds to that shift uh, in the way we you know, relate to reality. I mean, everything's a relationship. We're in relationship with creation. We're in relationship with everything that we interact with. And uh, creating upgrades is to improve those relationships, to create greater harmony. Um, and, and yeah, just like paying attention, paying attention. So lots of dark technologies are used to make that very, very difficult. And it's really amped up right now. I know everybody's dealing with just all sorts of difficult situations. People's jobs and livelihoods are being compromised. Families and friends are, are starting to break apart because people aren't um, seeing eye to eye or, or, or responding in a similar way. But I just hope that we can all just hold a love vibration, um, have our boundaries intact, but just hold a love vibration no matter how different our reactions are that love wins instead of this divide and conquer because that's the ultimate goal. And the weapons and all these different tactics are geared towards that. So if we can keep our attention on what they're trying to break up and what they're trying to target, then all the weapons and all the assaults and all the different things that they're using to create the separation nullifies and becomes neutralized. It's no longer a weapon anymore. It becomes neutralized because what they're attempting to truly target, they can't have because we're committed and devoted to holding that sacred flame and holding that frequency connection to um, a greater universal love energy, which is part of the global alchemy that's underway is to, to maintain that so that we can you know, turn things around and not fall into the pit of what their goal is, which is to gain you know, ultimate control because of the fractures, not just within ourselves, but amongst each other. So uh, obviously it's important to have boundaries, but um, I think the greatest leadership in the world today is just, just holding love. And, and trust in yourself and trust in spirit and dropping the fear of death. We have died so many times. And uh, in a sense, you know, these kind of times are going to put us into a bit of a life review. I think we all kind of are preparing ourselves for the what ifs. Um, and so instead of fearing death, let's uh, embrace the love of freedom and do the work necessary for us to feel like we can face the creator and face um, our souls and, and face the unknowns with confidence that we've cleared enough of the negative patternings in our life to feel um, safe no matter what, no matter what happens. So anyway, all these different things are to create fear. It infects our creative channels. And once our creative channels are infected, we are generating these storylines um, that are kind of like hijacked storylines related to artificial timelines and kind of sub-realities based in holding a sub-personality that isn't operating in total fullness and wholeness. It's a lower chakra kind of thing. Um, instead of, you know, having that doorway open to being like, okay, if adversity is striking, I better find my treasures to help turn this around um, versus just being in a panic. So when panic strikes, when anxiety strikes, when trauma strikes uh, or self-doubt or any kind of fear, it's like, this is a doorway, this is an opportunity to open up to something that can begin to pour in to um, change the trajectory, to, to uh, bring us closer to ourselves. And I know I'm kind of redundant in saying that, but like, literally, these are the choices that are in front of us. Does adversity bring us closer to ourselves, or does it make us more fragmented, more undone to the point where we just have somebody else, you know, kind of solve these things for us. And so, that's why we are our own saviors. 